Or say, hey guys, it's Klaus. Welcome back to another video. I have an absolutely amazing game to share with you today. And we're going to view it from multi-perspectives. Are you ready for some dual perspective action? Let me introduce to you the main characters today. Fleek Aaron from the 5PDD clan. Shout out to you guys! He's driving his M53 and 55 artillery. And Armor King H from the ER clan. Shout out to you guys. Is driving his VK7201K. They spawned together on the same team. They don't know each other. In fact, uh, old Armor King here is platooned with a bat chat who's scooting out ahead of him there. And I don't even know if they, these guys don't know each other. I don't know if they have anything in common other than playing World of Tanks together. But they do have one thing in common in this game. Well, two things in common. The first thing is they both have big... Motherfucking guns! And the second thing is they both have amazing games. So let's watch. And we're uh, viewing the the game from the perspective of Armor King, who moves out in his heavy tank. And look at that. All the enemies are spotted because the Bat Chat, his platoon mate, has lit them all as they cross the open area there. Well, this map is small, and it's one of the things that you... You can... Uh, I am died right away just by crossing the open area there. And he, his buddy has spotted them. And he takes his first shot and, of course, misses. Because he's in a VK. Which is... Uh, it's not a KV, is what I'm trying to say. It is German. And he missed. It's unfortunate. But uh, it looks like some of his teammates might be landing some shots. It looks like they did not get very much damage at all. And now he's doing something very, very risky. Look, he's right in the open there. He's not spotted. No one's shooting him. It looks like the enemy team did not actively light that area, but somehow he gets away. He gets away. He tried to take a shot and he did not connect after that excellent bit of spotting from the bat chat, his platoon mate. Well, Fleek Aaron, let's just call you Aaron in his, uh, in his SPG. This is post uh, rebalance of the SPG, so he does have a big motherfucking gun, but... It doesn't do as much damage as it used to because uh, Wargaming has decided that it's not allowed to do a lot of damage anymore. <laughs> and he starts the game aiming, pre-aiming at all these enemies that the Bat Chat has lit. And I think he makes a little mistake here. He's trying to shoot this guy, but there's other people lit like the Super Conquer. And that shot is going to take so long to get there that it misses. That was close, but it does zero. Zero. These two guys started the game. Well, a bit of bad luck, but that doesn't mean anything. The game does not have to be won in the first 30 seconds. Let's switch back to Armor King. And when I, well, he calls himself Armor King, and uh, you're going to see that uh, maybe that is a, a pretty good name for him because he plays these heavy tanks, and he knows how to use them. Okay, there he goes. He's going to take a shot. Oh, ho, ho! Yeah, this is the German heavy tank that has the big motherfucking gun. <laughs> it's got, I, th I think it's the same gun as the E100, isn't it? And that he just rolled. What did he roll on that? Well, he didn't, he didn't even high roll. He only rolled for 698. But that time, he rolled for 829 on the Patton. <laughs> and just like that, two shots, 1500 damage. Very nicely done. And he's just, uh, he's already safe here behind this uh, this little mountain that's north of him. The enemy SPG is also north of him. And that means he's safe from SPG fire. We're going to learn a little bit about being already safe in this video as well. Okay, oh, look, that's a haul down Emil. He is, he does not penetrate that. And he is switching to HE. Notice that? While he's changing ammo to HE, let's switch back to Aaron in his SPG. And see what he was doing. And uh, this is something you guys might want to take away from this video. And it is that this area here where all these enemies are. Is not already safe from both sides. You are in the open here. You are in no man's land. Ready to get hit like this. Let's watch it. And why not get stunned. Double stunned. That area is not already safe on this map. But the switching back to Armor King. Where he's hanging back right here, this is already safe because he's got cover north of him where the enemy SPG is. Now he's loaded HE and he's going to surprise this Emil too. Yeah, yeah, take 259 down. Oh, and he takes a hit back. The, the Emil 2 came out on top on that trade, but 
Uh, your hull down switch to HE is a good choice. Now, what I was getting at here, guys, is uh, I'm not saying that you should hang back to stay already safe. Oh, wait, HE on the side of an STB-1. <laughs> Hoo-ha! Welcome, Strafa, means uh, I'm packing the big motherfucking gun. <laughs> what? Okay, let's get back to... Uh, oh, wait, wait, we switched. We switched to the artillery. You see, you're not safe. You're not safe. This little south... West corner is not safe. Why don't you guys just get stunned again? That was close. And you know what's going to happen 35 seconds later. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Now, this is one thing that really bothers me. When you switch to this mode, the the, the highlight of the enemy doesn't show up. He takes that shot, and nothing happens. And uh, that's why I use the overhead mode, and I don't switch to that this mode. I just, I don't, okay, I'm going to switch, stick to the artillery here, because watch what happens here, okay? When he puts his, the aiming circle is there, a different perspective, but you don't get the outline of the enemy. You see that? You just have to judge where to shoot. Well, while he's reloading there, let's switch back to the heavy tank because he is almost reloaded. And he's still got HE loaded, and he's going to put another one into the turret of that Emil. 340 damage on HE. Okay, so the SBG is reloaded. Now watch this, guys. So look at this. Watch this here. He's going to reload. Be patient. Be patient. He's going to reload. Come on. He's, okay, he's reloaded, doesn't have targets. Wait till he has a target and watch what happens here. As soon as his teammates poke around the corner there and... Okay, he's lit this guy. Now watch. Is he on target? There's a bush that you can't see. It's just... It's annoying. Now from the top-down view, when your aiming circle is on the target, you, you get the enemy outlined, but in this mode you don't. But anyway, he's probably practiced that and he takes a shot. They're knocked out. They're knocked out. So he knows what he's doing. Switching back to the heavy tank. Now he's still loading HE because he was getting ready to shoot that Emil 2 again and he's moving forward. Let's see how this unfolded from his perspective. He's got the HE loaded. It looks like the enemies are backing up because they've taken a lot of damage. He's looking for that Emil 2. No, no, he doesn't want the T-50. There. Yeah, there's the Emil 2. He's got the HE loaded and he could take a shot on him, but the, why not shoot the bat shot? Hoo-ha! Avish and his buddy, as we saw just a second ago, aims and takes out the Emil too. So that worked out nicely. Now my point uh, about what I mentioned earlier about this area being already unsafe. I'm not saying that you should always just hang back to stay in already safe positions, but it's one thing you have to understand on this map, especially when there's two or three artilleries, that you're going to get pounded in this little area. And usually there's a lot of fighting here. So some of the uh, better strategies, especially when there's multiple SPGs in the game, is to hang back and let the enemies commit in the open ground and let your SPGs pound them while they sit in the open. Or, if you have the advantage, to, to win it quickly and push forward and get already safe. But not to linger here, especially when it's 3 versus 3 or 4 versus 4 here. This is where you're going to just get shot over and over and over and get stunned again and again. And again, just something you should know. Why not shoot him in the side for 802? Hoo-ha! Oh, yeah, he's lost a lot of HP there, though, while I was talking. Oh, and he's tracked again. Oh, boy, he's, he's loaded the regular ammo now. No, he's taking another big hit. He's a one-shot. Now, he needs some help. Is there anyone that can help? Well, there just happens to be a uh, an SPG on your team. And he is pre-aimed at this guy here and takes the shot. Got him. Got him. Well, that helped. But it's still precarious. It's still precarious. He's still a one shot. And there's an enemy. Take another. Oh, a beautiful shot. 721 on the T-55A. And you notice he's, he's shooting and pulling back. Shooting and pulling back. He's not taking hits in return. He's got some teammates with him that should be flanking around there on the left. But that doesn't stop him. Maybe he can take out this T-55A. He's reloaded. He's going to wait till they fire. Yeah, he's fired. And I can easily shoot him in the side. Oh! He just tracked him. And it looks like he repaired and got away. Let's look at it from the SPG perspective. There, he's tracked. Oh, he repaired. He's getting away. Well, let her rip! You can run, but you can't hide. And now look at the uh, look at the score here. They're actually losing seven nine eight nine after that kill. And are you looking at the minimap? Are you looking at the minimap? No, you're not. Well, it's a good thing he is because he anticipates these enemies approaching him from behind. Now those guys that came over the bridge and snap! He takes out the STB one, and now he's got he's got an object two six eight version four and a standard B. 
He's going to take this corner here. He's got a, a K91 right there on his right. So they, if these enemies push, they're in a crossfire. So they're hesitating. And even though he's a one-shot, he's just he's just put pressure on this on this auto loader, the standard B. The K91 is taking shots. Is he gonna get one of them? Is he gonna get one of them? Wouldn't it be nice if he took out this Russian TD? Oh, he low rolled. That would have been nice, but another 735 damage and some spotting assist. And now, oh, is he going to get taken out? Come on, buddy. Angle your armor. The K91 has got a shot. Him. Oh, he's tracked. Take it. Take the shot. Take the shot. Yes. He's got another one. It's 12-12. He's, he's got no HP. Where's the next enemy going to come from? And now, let me stop it right here. Now, I'm, I'm going to be an armchair quarterback for a second here. And this is very easy to do. Uh, in hindsight, but in the heat of the battle, it's difficult. Look, they've played an amazing game. It's 12-12. Look at he's look at the mini map. He's here, and the K91 is right beside him. In situations like this, when you fought so hard and it's so close, if you want to increase your chance of success of winning, just stay together. It doesn't really matter if you follow your plan or your teammates' plan. Just as long as you do it together, you have a much better chance of winning. Look at the enemies. They're all dispersed. You could go after either one of them together. But in the heat of the battle, it's hard to know what's going on and it looks like the k91 is going to go after the object 268 version 4 and he's going to go after the grille they're going after both enemies one versus one instead of going after one enemy two versus one and he gets taken out now it's my opinion that armor king played that perfectly he's in the big slow heavy tank and he turned to face the grille in situations like these i think it's up to the medium tank the k91 who's mobile and fast he should have grouped up with his heavy tank there and I think they would have been able to, to take out that Grille. Maybe he could have flanked around. Uh, they could have done it together, but he did not. Let's check out how the K91 does here. There he is. Now he has just taken out that uh, Object 268 version 4. And is feeling pretty good that he's taken out one more enemy. But what happened is he won his 1 versus 1 battle. But the VK lost his 1 versus 1 battle. So as far as the team goes, it's still even. Now he has to fight the Grillet, and it could go either way. Where is that Grillet? Is he going back to base? Or is he going to come around this corner every, any second here? Let's see. You'll notice that uh, Aaron is headed towards the cap in his SPG. He's propelled. Oh, there's the Grillet. There's the Grillet. Just take him out one shot. T take him. T is he going to get the shot? Oh, he hit the ground, and it looks like the, the Grillet is missed as well. He out. He can reload faster than that Grillet. Just take the Oh, he's missed again. He's been, and he's been taken out. And uh, that's why you stay together, guys. Especially after such a close game. So well fought. Let's switch to the uh, uh, the M53, M55's perspective. And we'll see how that uh, K91... He did go and fight this Object 268 version 4. Which I think was a mistake. But he did take him out. But he paid for it. He paid for it by letting his... Uh, well, he didn't let his teammate die. We don't know whether it would have been better if he went to group up with the VK. But just in general, at the end of the game like that, the team that groups up, uh, that Grillet, just seeing two enemies maybe would have backed up, wouldn't have uh, snapped the shot. The K91 could have flanked them. It just would have been easier, in my opinion. But now, now, we're going to watch Aaron here in his SPG, and it's just him. And there's a Grillet and an artillery, a GW Tiger, who's also got four kills and obviously knows what he's doing. Now remember, the enemies know that he's headed this direction because that Object 268 version 4 spotted him before he died. So the GW Tiger must be ready. Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's up there. Who's going to get the shot? Who's going to get the shot? Let's see. This is when you lock on, you cross your fingers, and you pull the trigger! You can run, but you can't hide! And looking at the minimap, this is right about when that K91 died. There's the Grille. There he is on the minimap. He's just disappeared. He's a fast tank. He's got a big gun. And he's probably headed back here. He can make it back in time. His teammates are saying to get ready. They're pinging the map. They're pinging the location where they think that Grille is going to come from. So he's going to get set up here. Watch this finish, guys. Here he is. There's no way he could cap for victory. That grillet's gonna get back. 
He does not have enough time to go all the way around to the ice road, so he's going to come around this corner. So look what he's doing here. He's putting his central marker, that little white dot, right at the corner there. The grille has to come through there. And then he's going to press the trigger, and cross his fingers and press the trigger, and hope he hits. Where are you, Mr. Grille? That, that grille is probably running as fast as he can here. Let's see if he comes. Is he going to just hide and not try and come and reset? No, he's going to come and reset. Let's watch it. Cross your fingers. Pull the trigger. Hoo-ha! You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> Great game. Fantastic victory. Look at this. First class. Fleek Aaron in the artillery. Amazing. Well done. i uh, lose 11,000 credits for your effort. And Armor King H. Way to go, buddy. 7,000 damage. Blocked almost 4,000. Why don't you lose double? 22,000 for you. Thanks for sending that to me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments. Shout out to both you guys. If you guys play a great game and uh, there's a, someone on the team that you just played well with, send me both your replays and I'll make more of these multi-perspective videos for you to enjoy.